the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the Game Day Review Podcast of the Parramatta Eels and the South Sydney Rabbitohs game, which was won by the South Sydney Rabbitohs 32 points to 16 Six tries to three, uh, a six tries to three win to the Rabbitohs played at Combank Stadium in some fairly average conditions. Uh, at one stage, just after half time, it was absolutely pouring with rain. I think there was a little bit of rain during the first half as well, but nothing like that after half time. It is it eased off a little bit, uh, but was back again during that second half as well. So some pretty tricky conditions playing in the wet. Uh, apparently, thirteen thousand at Combank Stadium. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to the game myself. Uh, I watched it at home, and it certainly did not look like thirteen thousand to me. Um, it was a lot of empty seats, I thought anyway. But who knows? Who knows? There might have been uh, there might have been a lot of South Sydney support there last night. And look, <coughs> uh, excuse me for that. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, look, I've forgotten where I was up to now. Uh, look, it uh, did not look like a thirteen thousand crowd at the game, but I could have been wrong. There might have been a lot of South Sydney support there. Uh, if you were there at the game, let me know what the crowd looked like and the atmosphere was like anyway. But look to the game, and early on, it started off. Look, both set. Both teams going set for set. Um, both completion rates were pretty good from both sides early on in that game. Uh, however, four minutes into the game, Parramatta got the first penalty. And then unfortunately on the first tackle, Will Penasini dropped the ball. And look, I think Will had a, a night that he'd like to forget again. And unfortunately, I think that's two weeks in a row for Will. Um Look, he's done little bits and pieces here pretty good, but I think two games that he would love to put into the back of his mind and just get rid of and uh, get ready for next week's game against the Gold Coast Titans because just the last two weeks, it hasn't been the same Will Panasini that I think we have seen in previous games. South Sydney ended up getting the the ball in a good position, but then South lost the ball shortly afterwards. So a little bit of a let off there for Parramatta. Uh, and then one of the bizarre bizarre most bizarre captain's challenges i think we've ever seen um bryce cartwright it was a bryce cartwright offload i think it was and it was one of the ugliest and most bizarre captain's challenges i've ever seen and i think even even the commentators were a bit perplexed as to this captain's challenge and it took the bunker a while as well um unfortunately though Parramatta lost that captain's challenge and that was only about five or so minutes into the game I think it was so um, pretty I guess you could say foolish losing a challenge five minutes into the game you only use your captain's challenge if you're absolutely certain that you are going to win it Uh, unfortunately Parramatta did not win that one Uh, look South Sydney they ended up getting the ball and Latrell Mitchell he was on the charge but good cover defence from Gutho and Blaze Talangi as well, holding him out. Um, and then South Sydney's first try to Jacob Gagai. It was just a simple 
scrum play. South had four on three. Just an easy pass to Gagai, who gets the first try uh, eight minutes into the game. So a uh, little bit concerning there, where South Sydney could have four players on one side and Parramatta only three. It was good vision from Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell uh, to see that, I guess. And look, they just had the numbers. And it was an easy passage to the line from, uh, uh, not Dane Gagai, uh, Jacob Gagai, uh, his brother. Um, Parramatta then had a chance through debutante Jake Tungo, but he's denied by the defence. But they get Parramatta get a penalty from that from a high tackle, and they go again. Uh, look, uh, Parramatta just could not crack South Sydney's line until the 35th minute to the try to Blaze Talangi, which was his, I think, seventh try in seventh games in seven games this season. So, look, he is going really well, and I really hope that Parramatta can lock him up long-term uh, because we can all see the talent there. I hope he can pick his position. I hope the new coach coming in, if uh, Blaze is still there. If uh, he can play that position, uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not 100% sure if we have heard what position Blaze is favoured at. Uh, apparently, coming through all the juniors, centre was his position. Um, but I'm not too sure if he would like to go to fullback at all or not. But um, that'll be have to be interesting to see what happens there. But seven tries in seven games... That is sensational. We can all see the talent from him. He is finishing off tries in those corners uh, very well. He has got that speed, which is what is lacking at Parramatta in the back line. Uh, But through him, it is good to see. Uh, And look, Siasini's defence on their line was just too good. Parramatta had a few opportunities to try and crack that line. But Parramatta just could not get over the line. Uh, South Sydney just kept on holding them up, holding them up. Look, within the first 50 minutes of the game, tackles in the opposition 20. Parramatta had 26 tackles in the opposition 20 and South only six. Um, But South went into the lead, uh, uh, went into half time in the lead, 16 points to four. A lot of their, their tries to... Jack Whiten was a, a long-range try, which was a bit disappointing, that one to see. Um, Gagai's first try, his was just overlap man. And the, the try right before halftime uh, to Cody Walker uh, was very disappointing as well because it could have been 10-4 at halftime. Um, but it ended up being 16 points to four, three tries to one. So it just, it was, I guess you could say South Sydney were doing a bit of a Parramatta on Parramatta with their offload game. Parramatta weren't wrapping up the ball in tackles and South South Sydney were just getting those offloads happening and uh, Cody Walker scores right before half time. Pretty disappointing from Parramatta. 22 missed tackles in the first half, and you just cannot win games of a rugby league with those missed tackles. So uh, defence has been a problem for Parramatta this season. They have the worst defensive record in the NRL at the moment, so that is a something that definitely needs to be addressed and fixed. Uh, obviously something to work on for the rest of the year and in the off-season as well because this year's gone, they can't make the finals. So obviously something to work on this year and in the off-season as well because it has been a long time since Parramatta have had good defence and it is very concerning, especially on the edges as well. Their edge defence is pretty... Um, you could say frustrating because tries get scored where we see the winger jamming in and just creating that overlap. So 
that is one concern that Parramatta will have to work on for sure. Good to see Regan Campbell Gillard get over the line for a try. But what set up that try was a great run from debutant Charlie Geimer. Now, I I picked him as my player of the match, um, along with Jake Tungo as well. Uh, more so Charlie, because he had an awesome game. Uh, he... For a debutant, his stats really set up uh, this victory and very impressive from a debutant. Played 45 minutes. He actually ran 11 times for 109 metres. Now, if you compare that to uh, Bryce Cartwright, a second rower who played 80 minutes in the game, well, Bryce did score a try, but he did 11 hit-ups for 96 metres. So very impressive from Charlie Geimer. Sean Lane playing a different position uh, against South Sydney in the lock position. Is it his position? I probably don't think so. Uh, seven runs for 71 metres. Uh, so uh, a magical, I guess you could say, despite the result, A great debut from Charlie Geimer. And with the news today coming out, uh, not officially yet by the time I'm recording this podcast, but it is believed that Junior Palo will be out for the rest of the season with a foot injury. So pretty disappointing, I guess you could say, to see him out for the rest of the season, although he probably hasn't had the best of seasons and a season that he would probably like to forget as well again this is probably a good opportunity for him to get his foot fixed and have surgery and get right and then uh, have a good break have a good off season and then get into it in pre-season and come back bigger and better in 2025 Uh, so that actually opens up the door for Charlie Geimer uh, to have junior spot and it also opens up the door for another potential uh, front rower to come into this side for Parramatta and it could also that other spot uh, that now has opened up with junior's foot injury could be a competition between Wirimu Greg and also under 19's New South Wales State of Origin representative Sam Tuivati. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, but he definitely, uh, that's a good opportunity to blood Sam into first grade, I feel, um, because as I said before, I don't think Parramatta can make the finals in 2024, so why not give these youngsters a crack at playing first grade at, at this time? So uh, Sam, he represented New South Wales in the under-19s, had a pretty solid game off the bench, and look, with this uh, a junior Palo injury, it's a good opportunity for him or Wiramu Greg to get some game time in first grade. Now, um, after after halftime, RCG scored that try, and then but then South Sydney hit straight back six minutes later through Latrell Mitchell, who scores his first try against Parramatta in eight games. Basically, just sort of slid over the line uh, for a little bit out. Smart to use those conditions and get a try. Jacob Gagai scored his second try in the 68th minute. Uh, and before that, Jake Tungo was unfortunately has a try denied for going out. Now, it was very close, very close, I must say. But unfortunately, his arm went in a touch. But it would have been. Great to see uh, Jake get a a try on debut as we we love to see debutants get a try on debut. And look, I suppose in the context of the game, there was probably no real celebrations going on, but uh, I hope the rest of the NRL teams are focused on uh, dry July try celebrations. Um, so let's uh, get those. Let's get that. Not not dry July. Uh, try 
Dry July. Um, I'm thinking of the no drinking alcohol Dry July, which some people are doing. So if you know of anybody who is participating in that, then please give them your support as best you can. Uh, Try July. Uh, Now, we love to see some try celebrations come through in the NRL. They are a great source of entertainment. So, okay, players in the NRL, let's get it happening. Uh, But unfortunately, we didn't see any there last night. Uh, Mitchell Moses, he got Sinbin late in the game, 75th minute. Can somebody please tell me what it was for? I guess it was a little bit of an act of frustration. That's why he got that Sinbin, but it didn't, I, I don't know, it didn't really look like the greatest of sin binning actions but uh he got the early shower he got into the change rooms first and could have that hot shower before the rest of the boys got in uh look 32 points to 16 as i said a very disappointing result once again especially at home south sydney have been a little bit of a bogey side over the years for Parramatta of recent and that trend still continues it is South Sydney's fifth win in a row Uh, Parramatta slipped to their fourth loss in a row and also at the time of the game go back down to the bottom of the ladder in 17th position with the Storm to play the Tigers coming up as well. So that game is on Saturday 5.30pm. So there's only a little bit of difference between the two sides. There's a six points for and against difference. So... Um, who knows what can happen in that game. I would definitely probably think that Parramatta would will go to 16th spot on the ladder, last equal last with the Tigers after that game. But, hey, you never know. The Tigers might be able to pull out a win at Leichhardt Oval, their spiritual home, against the Melbourne Storm. So that will mean that Parramatta's just dead set last again uh, by themselves. Uh, look... A very disappointing game, I must say. It uh, just definitely wasn't the night that Parramatta wanted. Look, if we go to some stats of the game, and it, look, Parramatta 51% possession, South Sydney 49% possession. Uh, so Parramatta had a little bit more, a uh, little bit more ball. Uh, 41. Well, uh, completion rate 75%, South Sydney 77%. And looking just through the um, figures here, the stats here about the attack, and J- Parramatta about 100 more meet- run metres than South Sydney. Um, line breaks 7 to 5 to South. Tackle breaks forty three to twenty two. Uh, look, the kicking was a little bit down from Parramatta five hundred one meters. South Sydney six seventy seven. Although the pleasing thing for Parramatta, I guess, was three forced dropouts, which is pretty good. Um, even amount of tackles made by each side, but the concerning stat overall, as I mentioned, those missed tackles before. 43 missed tackles in the whole game to Parramatta and 22 to South Sydney. So that was a pretty concerning thing there. Four ruck infringements to Parramatta, South Sydney only one. And look, uh, that's been in the news as well of late with some greats. Cameron Smith, I think, calling for the uh, get rid of the six agains as we don't know what they are. Uh, Both sides used seven interchanges in the game. Uh, Now to the player stats. And look, it's uh, pretty concerning, I think, um, for Parramatta. Uh, Dylan Brown, I thought, was quiet in the game. He just did did what he had to do. 
but he didn't do anything outstanding, I thought. 14 runs for 139 metres. Uh, Blaze Talangi, look, he's just getting better and better in every game. 14 runs, 131 metres. Uh, scored that try as well. Sean Russell was a little bit disappointing as well. One point in the game there, South Sydney had a, a Parramatta forced to forced a, a goal line dropout. South Sydney have dropped it out and Sean Russell was inside the 10 metres. So, look, that is really disappointing to see. Um, and, look, I don't think he has had the best of games in the last couple of weeks either, to be honest. But with Parramatta's lack of depth, I don't know who you're going to put into that centre position. So if you have an op- if you have a suggestion, let me know who you would put in that centre position. Uh, but I guess he will get named next week because of that, that I guess, lack of depth. Uh, Mitchell Moses, 12 runs, 76 metres. Uh, Regan Campbell Gillard, 11, 107. Brendan Hands, only the one run last night for 10 metres. Um, Sean Lane, seven, seven runs, 71 metres. Matt Arthur, he had a, a quiet game. He only got 18 minutes on the field, so can't blame him for that too much. Although I do like the service from Dummy Half from... Uh, him when he was on uh, his passes look pretty crisp and not too bad so something I think we have lacked in that hooker position for a while now Matt Dury his second game back in first grade had a pretty solid game I thought um, for the time that he spent in the game 31 minutes uh, but as I said before that Charlie Geimer 45 minutes, outstanding effort, 11 runs, 109 metres, also 26 tackles as well. So uh, he did that over two stints, 35 minutes, and then 10 minutes towards the end there. So, look, um, a fairly disappointing effort again from Parramatta. I don't know how this is going to change. I don't know whether there's infighting between the players uh, we did hear the big spray that Mitchell Moses did in the sheds up in Newcastle. Uh, is there a bit of infighting between the players? What is going on? There's no communication, I don't think, out in the field. Um, and they are sitting with only four wins for the season and sit in last position on the ladder. It is a very frustrating, disappointing season for Parramatta fans that is for sure. Look, the, the less spoken about that game, I guess, the better. Um, as we look to next week, and the Rabbitohs, they play the Dolphins at Redcliffe, KO Stadium in Redcliffe on Thursday night. So Wayne Bennett's team taking on Wayne Bennett's future team in 2025. This will be quite interesting uh, how this result goes. I think Origin players will be out of these games. So uh, the Origin stars will be out. Latrell won't be playing. Uh, Cameron Murray. And I'm just trying to think for the Dolphins. Still no Hammer, I don't think. Hammer, so Tabuai for Doe. Uh, maybe no Felice Kafusi as well. Uh, Parramatta, they take on the Gold Coast Titans who sit themselves in 15th position on the ladder. 5.30pm Saturday, July 13, up there at Seabus Super Stadium on the Gold Coast. So we saw what they did against the Warriors a few weeks ago now, 66 points to 6. And uh, it's worrying times for Parramatta. Mitchell Moses, he'll be out of this side. He'll be in the New South Wales side for Game 3 of Origin. So take the best player out of Parramatta, uh, which is Mitchell Moses. And look, this could be anything. Who goes to halfback? What do we do? Um, does DJ Nasi come back in to uh, halfback? Dylan Brown stays at 5'8". Does Dylan Brown go back to halfback? Um, what do we do? What does Parramatta do? We'll just have to wait and see on Team List Tuesday. But as I said, disappointing result 
for Parramatta. South Sydney, they march on. Can they make the finals? That is the question that I'll pose in this podcast. Uh, if there's any South Sydney fans listening, can you guys, can the South Sydney Rabbitohs make the eight? They sit now uh, in 13th position on 18 points. So as it stands at the moment, they are only two points out of the eight. So can they make the eight? They're making a charge. If they win next week, it'll be their sixth win in a row. So they've had all their buys, so no more buys. So it's all uh, all full steam ahead from now. So they are on a roll. As I said, five wins in a row. Can they get into that top eight? So let me know. What are your thoughts? Can they make the eight? Um, and who's going to slip out of the eight for them to get in? But that was it for round number 18. I hope you enjoyed that review podcast. And I think that currently I have the interview-based podcast with a fan interview and his name is Ray Price. Yes, can you believe that? Ray Price. But he was named before he became a Parramatta Eel. So check that one out. It's, look, it's an interesting story from a Eels fan. Um, there will also be a replay chat of my chat with the Duckman, which I will do a little bit later tonight on Pulse FM 89.9 FM. So uh, check that one out as well. We will talk about all things NRL, maybe state of origin selections as well. Just have to wait and see what happens there. But a replay chat of that will be coming out as well. Also, make sure you're following the Instagram page as well for some great content coming out as well. Pose a couple of questions here and there, but um, yeah, so follow the Instagram page as well. Thank you very much for listening. If you are not a, if you are, if you are a Rabbitohs fan, congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the weekend in in front of your game against the Dolphins coming up. If you're a Parramatta fan, well, you're probably like me, uh, a little bit down. Well, just try and enjoy your weekend as best you can and uh and anyone else who is listening from any other teams i hope your team gets up over the weekend so good luck enjoy your footy over the weekend for listening to another episode of the Parakeet Podcast. See you next time.